Hey everybody, good morning. So, I've been thinking about maybe starting a classic car rental business for weddings. I haven't even started the business yet and I've gotten like five calls already. <laughs> Jokes aside, uh, a website ended up putting my phone number as the contact phone number to rent classic cars for weddings. So I got this weird, got a couple voicemail messages. One lady was like, hey, we're having a wedding up in Paso Robles and we want to see if we could rent one of your classic cars. I'm like, did they listen to the voice message? Because that's not a classic car rental business. So I can't even imagine with everything going on right now, how people could be planning weddings and stuff. I guess life goes on, but gosh, have you looked around lately about the state of our world and how close we are to tyranny and all of the things going on? Now, at the end of the show, we're going to talk about some of the conspiracies that became fact on this channel. So stick around for that. We've been around since 2012. We're going to talk about some of the things that we picked up on before they happened. And of course, we don't take any credit for that. That is a gift of the Holy Spirit because God wants people to wake up. He wants you to wake up from the right-left paradigm and stop playing with the enemy. He wants you to break away from it. Now, I know everybody's been talking about this pipeline right now, but to be honest, I'm tired of being manipulated by the powers that be. I know lots of channels are telling you to go get gas and everyone's in a panic and and I don't think that's a bad idea. But what are you going to do when the gas runs out? Just like the toilet paper. Remember? What's our backup plan? We should all be working towards independence from the beast. Every single day you, sh you wake up, you should be thinking about ways, little ways, that you can start to not be so dependent and panicked when something runs out. Because what ends up happening is the powers that be simply pull their little puppet strings and it causes you to panic. The question really should be, how long could you go without gasoline? Are you prepared to go without gasoline for three months? I'm not talking about getting back and forth to your job because at that point, jobs won't matter. We already know that the powers that be want you to believe that life would end if you couldn't go to your job. But yet, that's exactly what they did to us with the lockdown. So why are we freaking out about that? And are we, have we started to reduce our caloric intake? Or at least mentally prepared to not have all of the little things that we like in this life? Could we survive? There have been many, many people throughout the Bible that survived and thrived without any kind of services or resources. See, the powers that be do these kinds of things to remind us how helpless and dependent we are on them. It's like a hazing ritual. It's like they're punking us. And this is why so many people stood in line to get VCs. It was all based on fear. Fear of getting sick. Fear of not being able to travel this summer. Fear of it running out and not getting ours so that we could be free. We have to start breaking away from this panic thinking. We, start ha start, we have to start having more faith, you guys. And we all know it. How do you start? You start with little tiny things. Under your bed, you could store enough beans and rice to last you for six months. Just under your bed. So who cares if the gas runs out? Uh, if you have a way to burn wood and you have some kind of way to cook that, cook that right, those rice and beans if the gas went out. Do you see how those those just just those two things that I just mentioned 
for those of you that have it, takes all the fear out of, oh, we're going to run out of gas. And that's just two little tiny things that you could do. A fire pit with some wood, even if you live in a residential neighborhood. You know, get four or five or six bundles of wood and a barbecue pit. Now you can cook all your food if you had to. There's little things you can do, but see, we live in this society of convenience. And then when things happen and the powers that be start taking things away from us, we panic and then we're easily, more easily manipulated. Now, before we get into this White House conspiracy, this is actually a really funny story, I, but I want to go over a couple other stories first. I want to give you guys some updates on what the world is going to look like. The world according to Slouchy. He's now saying that masks will probably be part of every flu season. Now, we were warning against this way back when this all started. I said, you guys, if we do this, this is going to be every single year. This is going to be what we have to go through every flu season. And we told you guys this was the end game. When the whole spamdemic started. Let's read a little bit of this article. Slouchy says wearing masks could become seasonal following the spamdemic. Now, as it sits here, they're not saying that it's going to be mandatory. But they're putting this in your mind. Believe it or not, a lot of people are already at this point mentally. They're already pretty much resigning themselves to the fact that they're just going to wear the mask. These are even people that have already had the VC. Slouchy, the nation's leading infectious disease expert, said Sunday that people may decide to wear masks seasonally after the spamdemic to avoid spreading or contracting respiratory illnesses such as the floozy. In an interview on NBC's Meet the Press, the chief medical advisor pointed out that the public has grown accustomed to wearing a mask. And this is what we told you was going to happen too. That this was going to, we were going to start looking like China. And here we are. We've had practically a non-existent flu season this year, merely because people were doing the kinds of health things that were directed predominantly against CV-19. That's hogwash. That's not the reason why there was no flu season. He added that it is conceivable that during a seasonal periods where respiratory-borne illnesses such as the floozy are prevalent, people might decide in the next year or two to wear masks to diminish the possibility of either spreading or catching these diseases. Common viruses such as the floozy have virtually disappeared this year, partly because of CV restrictions, including masks. Now, think about how ridiculous this is. How many localities? across the United States did not comply with this. And we can even say that at the least, there were at least maybe 15, 20% of people that never even put one on. What about that method of contracting the floozy? Why aren't they addressing that here? Obviously, that would have contributed, it says, the sharp decline of floozy infections during this year's season have led to only one registered pediatric death. I don't buy that either. There were plenty of opportunities for the floozy to spread. It just disappeared, and it disappeared across the board around the world. But it really didn't disappear. That's the big white elephant in the room, in my opinion. The numbers were simply replaced. Now, I wanted to do a follow-up on the Helix TV series that we've been decoding. And as you guys know, I almost never on this channel do gematria calculations. I believe gematria is the language of the enemy. And it's used to discredit God or to try to discredit God. And almost every Gematra channel I know, except for a few, do not believe in Jesus. And many of them don't even believe in God. I believe the English language is actually cursed. 
It's a cursed language. Because we found time and time again that things spell other things backwards. And they add up to things in Gematria that don't make any sense. But since the enemy does use Gematria sorcery to communicate, I plugged in the term Narvik. Now many of you will remember that Narvik is actually the disease in the Helix series. It sounds a little bit like C-O-V-I-D, but this is the word. And remember, the series came out before President Trump was ever thinking about running, yet look at the term that matches with Narvik. They already knew. Remember the one of the lead women in the series, lead actresses, has the same birthday as Trump. So there are other some bizarre terms in here as well. Lord hidden in Zodiac. There's also Skull and Bones, Bill and Hillary, and the Egg of Ouroboros, which we already told you we'd already identified that in the series as well. So here's your confirmation. So again, this is the language of the enemy. This is why we don't live and die by this gematria. It's very confusing. There are some people that plug in the God and the devil and like they equal the same thing. So what is that? What kind of message is that sending to believers? This is why we don't get into it. But as I said, this is their language. Now, let's get into Bo Jiden. Because, you know, they're all on the same side. Here's the Los Angeles Times. And Bo Jiden is looking to triple federal land holdings up to 30%. In other words, one third of America he wants to federalize. Now, federalizing land does not mean that it's for the people. That means it's off limits, it's protected, the federal government can do whatever they want, they could say no trespassing, they can say you can't do this, this or that. Now of course this dovetails in with their 2030 plans to scoop up as much land as they can. But the question is, can eminent domain simply just take somebody's land? They can. Why? Well, because according to Bo Jiden, they're doing it under the guise of protecting the planet. Conservation. You see, all they have to do is send their horde of scientists onto your land and find a rare bug that only grows on your land. And then all of a sudden... Imminent domain will federalize that land to protect the bug. And if you don't think this is a likely scenario, understand that it's already happened. We also had Dump already pushing civil asset forfeiture, which will no doubt be part of the land grab as people's properties are confiscated for breaking the law. Oh, don't pay your parking tickets? Oh, civil asset forfeiture. Don't pay your taxes, civil asset forfeiture. Uh, get in a fight with someone and you owe them restitution, civil asset forfeiture. This is a bipartisan effort. And now, under the left and climate change, it looks like Bo is going to get his too. Let's read this article. This is very important. Bo Jiden administration looks to triple the amount of protected land in the U.S. This came out last week. Faced with a possible extinction of tens of thousands of species. And the growing threat of climate change. Bo Jiden administration announced plans to protect 30% of the nation's land. This should send alarm bells ringing. Now, the T-Man also federalized a lot of land. Actually took some from Native Americans too. In Rhode Island. For his friends that had casinos. 
Administration's proposal comes as California and several other states are already moving ahead with their plans to protect 30% of their land and coastal waters. So the states are doing it. Nuisance, Gavin Nuisance signed an executive order last year directing state agencies to develop a proposal for achieving this goal. Now, if you're not picking up what I'm putting down in terms of why this is so important, understand, let me tell you a story. Many of you know, I used to fish off the cliffs of Big Sur, California. It was one of the most favorite things I ever got to do. Throw a long pole out, about a 200 foot drop. You could feel the fish from 200 feet away down in the water. You reel it up the cliff. It's a little bit dangerous, but it is so fun. And what they've done to the California coastal waters is tantamount to robbery. They've protected most of the coast of California to where you can't just pull off the side of the road, walk down to the bluffs, and fish anymore. And I'm assuming, I haven't spent a lot of time in California over the last several years, but I'm assuming it's gotten way worse with this executive order to protect 30% of the land and coastal waters. Now, to let you know how serious this is, they these rangers, they've got these rangers and fish and game, and they just drive up and down the coast of California. And if they see a car pulled over, they, they look to see if there's they see fishing poles, and they will pull over, they'll check your licenses, and if you're fishing in protected waters, you're in big trouble. We're talking thousands of dollars of fines. Now, some people say, well, Casey, the government has all this under control. Don't they? I mean, shouldn't we have seasons for fishing and hunting and this thing and that? No. Do you really want this government who lies all the time to be in control of your natural resources? Do you want them standing in between you and them? What if they just decide they want everybody on the grid and now all of a sudden... They're not handing out as many deer tags. Think about it. It sounds great to manage the resources and have seasons and limits and to let somebody govern over that to make sure that the resource is sustainable. It sounds great. But at the end of the day, do you want, really want these people controlling what you take? Well, Casey, well, if we just let everybody do what they want, there won't be any deer left. There won't be any fish left. I don't buy that. I think there should be a threshold. If I was president or governor, there would be a threshold. In other words, a personal take. If you were a single person, you should be able to, with no restrictions, catch a daily limit. And even if that limit is lower, you should be able to catch enough food for one day. That should be your limit. Without any restrictions. You should be able to pull, a walk, drive up anywhere in the state and harvest nature for a daily need or a weekly need. If it's a remote place, they should increase that to a weekly limit. So four fish, one per day to feed a family if you needed to. But instead, there are all this licensing and restrictions for a single person taking something. Now, yes, if you drive up and a guy's got a pickup truck full of fish with flies all over them, uh, yeah, that would be wrong. Because what is he going to do with all his fish? You can't. Now you're into commercialism and selling for profit and all of that. But why are there these rules on one person that has already spent fifty, a hundred, two hundred dollars in in tackle and gear and fuel to get to the fishing location? And now you're going to have a season where they can't catch that fish. You're gonna have all these different restrictions. I can't imagine that a single person daily use or weekly harvest limit 
would be would have any kind of impact on the environment. So, and I, as you guys know, I've also told you I'd rather go catch my own fish than go have the convenience of buying it in a store. Why do I say that? Because anytime something's gotten to a store, it's already changed hands four or five times. It's not fresh. There is a lot of waste associated with those catches. Do you think they sell every single last fish that's caught? No. As soon as that fish is not fresh anymore, they'll either freeze it or throw it away. We've seen the Walmart backlots. We've seen videos of all the food being thrown away. I'd rather go catch it myself. So commercialism is the problem, not the individual man or woman who wants to catch a fish. So this is the problem that I have. Can you guys hear me? All right, let's let that catch up. All right, can you guys hear me? Okay, there we go. Looks like we're back on. All right, sorry about that, you guys. Something happened in the internet. It like dropped off. We probably got zapped by a satellite because we were starting to get into some really meaty stuff. Always happens. So I was talking to this contractor in, in Arkansas. He told me that as a contractor, he is not allowed to use virgin wood from someone's own property. Now, why would they make a dumb rule like that? You're not allowed to use virgin wood for new construction from someone's property? Unbelievable. So these are the kind of rules that the government puts on people to force you into certain markets. It has nothing to do with safety. It has nothing to do with the things that really matter. It has everything to do with control. Now, there are always ways around this stuff, but you have to be creative. You have to have faith. You have to figure out how to get around the rules. And the best way that I've seen so far is independence, being independent from the system. Now, pretty soon they're going to make it illegal to be independent from the system, but you can do the best you can now with what you have. So that's the story about fishing off the cliffs and fishing and my feelings on fishing and seasons and harvest and all of these things. There shouldn't have to be a rule on someone who wants to eat one deer in a year, for instance. Now, if you're catching 10 of them and you're selling them, of course, that should there, there should be a problem with that. Or wasteful use of nature. But even that, I don't want the government, you know, controlling that. Now, here's the final story. This is what you guys pretty much came here to watch today. This is the White House's very own conspiracy theory now try not to laugh actually you can laugh because it's kind of funny you know they spend so much time fact checking and trying to discredit those who don't accept the official narrative right so when they come up with their own conspiracies you can't help but laugh let's read this here the white house acknowledges a mysterious health attacks occurred in the u.s reviewing intel on incidents the White House acknowledges mysterious health attacks. The mysterious health incidents that have affected dozens of U.S. personnel around the globe have also occurred within the United States. So now there's a mysterious enemy. The source of the illnesses known as Havana Syndrome after the first cl cluster of cases at the U.S. Embassy in Cuba is still unknown. But there's growing pressure from Congress to figure out what has affected so many U.S. Dip diplomats, spies, and other officials? And who are, who or what is behind it? At this, see, they don't even haven't even identified what this thing is yet. They're just making it up. At this point, at this moment, we don't have the cause of these incidents, which are both limited in nature and the vast majority of which have been reported overseas. 
the Bo Jiden administration has launched a review of U.S. intelligence to determine if there are other previously unreported cases and there's a broader pattern. Last month, U.S. defense officials briefed lawmakers on the Senate and House Armed Services Committee on several previous unreported incidents of U.S. personnel falling sick after alleged exposures. Hmm, I wonder if they were all VC'd. Dozens of Americans have been diagnosed with a range of symptoms, including traumatic brain injuries. Well, that could be caused by a blood clot, with several describing bizarre experiences like strange noises and sensations. Uh, wow. Almost like a haunting. Uh, we said all that was going to happen, too. The mental zombie apocalypse. They have acknowledged cases in Cuba, uh, China, Uzbekistan. The issues have vexed U.S. officials since 2016 when the first cases were reported at the embassy in Havana. Okay, so that's before VC, right? Well, there's still no definitive answer. The National Academies of Science issued a report that concluded the most likely source is directed pulsed radio frequency energy. Are you kidding me? So they spend all this time discrediting people in the truth community for talking about this. And now they're acknowledging that this is a possibility. Among the possible new cases are also reportedly at least two incidents in Washington. These patterns of attacking our fellow citizens serving our government appears to be increasing. So some kind of directed pulse. We just covered something like this. We decoded the Helix series. When that lady pulled out that, uh, that pulse cannon, remember? So, what else does it say here of note? Growing number of reports of alleged incidents without clarity about whether or not they're related to what's happening to U.S. personnel. So, that's the update on the secret <laughs> attacks on the White House. Unreal. Now, we're going to quickly backtrack on this channel back to 2012 when we started this channel and we're going to look at what happened and the quote unquote conspiracy theories that became fact. So back in 2012, 2013, we started picking up pre-programming chatter about fireballs. I think the first time we saw it was in iPad goat Two, where these fireballs came down out of the skies and hit the three pyramids at the end of IPET Go 2, which is the animation. And then the following year marked the most intense fireball sightings in recent history. And we haven't had any since. So it slowed down significantly, but many of you will remember in 2013, that was the year of the fireballs. Now, we don't know what that really represented or what it was. We just know we were talking about it before it happened. We also... Under the Bo Mama administration, tracked on a U.S. map all of the school scrutings. And we saw that they formed a smiley face. Now, many of you will remember that when we mapped out every single one of the top scrutings. And now we're starting to see this smiley face as a symbol of evil. What else did we anticipate over the years? Well, we knew that they were looking to slowly tighten the screws on your right to defend yourself, the 2 AD. And sure enough, states have made it really difficult to get ammo, shells. We have red flag laws in place. And we now have a country that is thoroughly divided about Second Amendment rights. Now, that's always been the case, but I think we can all agree that this has intensified over the last five or ten years. What else have we talked about on this channel that came to fruition? Well, remember those videos we did on the eclipses 
and America is Egypt. We showed you the crossing eclipses in Makanda, Illinois. And we talked about how that area was called Little Egypt. We also raised the alarm bells about the NASA eclipse balloons and revealed that it was a ritual to infect us with the coming spamdemic. During that time, we decoded the Strain series on FX. And we talked about the red balloons. We talked about the It Clown. We talked about previous flu Z seasons. And how Australia got hit hard the year before CV-19 came out. And then sure enough, the John Hopkins red balloon death map appeared. And the, of course, the worldwide spamdemic now known as CV-19. All of this we were talking about on this channel before it happened. We also warned about a national ID. Having to show your papers to travel. Forced mask mandates that would become a part of everyday life. Mandatory VCs year after year. I think everybody can agree that when all this started last year, that nobody would have believed you if you would have said that you would that your employer would could possibly force the VC, or you you could be have to be forced to have a VC in order to go to a sports event or anything like that. But now here we are, and we were warning against that. We also told you that there was no way that the powers that be would stop at two weeks. And here we are a year later and exactly what we said was going to happen is happening. Now we also spent a lot of time on decoding Chrome of Adreno, we have to call it, and the Tom Hanks Toy Story pre-programming. We had uncovered that the entire Toy Story franchise had this inappropriate undertone running through it. And themes of traffic of children running through the entire franchise. That every single story in the Toy Story franchise was about a stolen child or a missing child or toy. Now, we removed most of those videos because YouTube calls that bullying now. So I had to take all those down. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't keep a lot of them. But if I do find those, I'll upload them to Odyssey. And I put an Odyssey link in, in all my videos in the description. Go over there, subscribe, and I'll try to get some of those Toy Story videos back up. I, I have a hard drive. I might be able to salvage some of them, at least a few of them, so you guys can see what's up. I'll do that probably today. But I want you to notice how everything that I just told you that we were picking up on before it happened. Every one of them is bipartisan. In other words, both the right and the left had their part in helping to move along the agenda to slowly erode your rights. So think about all of what I just told you when the powers that be try to discredit free thinkers like us. Of course, I don't take any of the credit or glory for anything that I just told you. We're simply following the Holy Spirit, following his direction. I remember when I first started doing the Toy Story series, people thought I was crazy. Got a lot of thumbs down. You're crazy. But then when we finally got through all the work in its entirety, I decoded every single Toy Story film. And every one had the same themes. Then people are like, wow, you're right. There it is. And some of it was ridiculous. It seemed ridiculous. Like Buzz being a toy. Used for things that the screen said that he wasn't supposed to be used for. But when you look at him and you really think about what you're looking at, then you get it. And then I got all of the haters, you know, the people that love Toy Story. And they're like, well, of course they're going to put adult themes in a children's movie because they have to entertain the adults too. And that's totally okay. Totally dismissing the programming that it's doing to the children who are also watching 
these films. So, I'll try to get some of those Toy Story uh, videos uploaded. I'm going to look on my, I have a removable hard drive and I saved as much as I could from the other channel. I'll try to get those those up over there. Okay, you guys. All right, let's go into the chat. Sorry about the uh, drop out there. That was weird. We are tracking along really nice. And uh, all of a sudden, the internet went out or something. So I reset the internet. Luckily, it didn't kick us off from the stream completely. So here we are. Hey, guys. Hey, Tom. Kimberly. Teresa. True Peace. Christy Belly. Yeah, Woody. You get it? See? They know. Why didn't we figure that out before? Why did it take... I think we did Toy Story. For like six months, we did Toy Story. It was right before... We, uh, Tom Hanks started finding all those shoes, those missing shoes. Remember? So, okay. Uh, congratulations, Seven Grains. I, I heard Richie give you a shout out. That's cool for your work. Seven Grains does a lot of work breaking down the matrix. So, congrats on that. It's always good when the smaller channels can get exposure from the bigger channels. Savage has a really good channel too. I think he's in the chat. And there may be others, so if I missed you, sorry. Hey, RF. It's going pretty good. Yeah, the son, the, his son, the Tom Hanks son. It's just, it's all obvious to those of us that are awake who watch this stuff and who have critical thinking. Exactly, Miss Mark Pants. Lance, C O R O N A. Remember that decode we did on that? It was all foreshadowing and pre programming. And of course, he was the first one to give us convalescent plasma to save the world. Trying to be the, uh, the new Messiah, right? Instead of pointing people in the correct direction. So. All right, guys, I'm going to pop off here. I think we have just the trailer from Helix, the part three. I uploaded that on my backup channel. I think it's going to premiere like shortly after this. Yeah, like a couple more minutes. You guys have all seen it if you were here for yesterday's live show. But if you weren't here for yesterday's live show, you can pop over there in the premiere. I'll go over there and hang out in the chat with you guys. And then after that, I'm going to try to upload these to this Toy Story stuff onto odyssey so you guys can i'll try to just i'll just upload it all today whatever i find i'll upload okay i love each and every one of you have a great day be blessed and when you get off here everybody say the lord's prayer maybe if we all say it together then the kingdom will come sooner than later be safe everybody